Well, hello people. Now isn't technology wonderful, or is it? Now most people out there will have a smartphone or a mobile phone beside them somewhere. And of course the young people are tethered to the internet and their phones all day, and all night for that matter. And these modern mobile phones, are they safe? Being stuck to your head next to your brain all day. Well, there's a few papers out there you can find online that say they're not that safe at all and can cause quite a few brain cancers. But those sort of papers are being quite suppressed, of course. But let's take a little bit of history look at the phone. Hey, Tommy, Tommy, can you hear me? I can hear you. Ah, yes, I remember these. Of course, a lot of the younger people won't even know what they are. Well, in my day, they were the younger people's mobile phones, so to think. And I remember having these in the camp that we had, from one camp to the other, and you just had to pull the cord tight, and they did work. And I don't know why, but bean cans always worked the best. And were these dangerous? Well, only if you could wrap the string around your neck and strangle yourself. Apart from that, they were pretty safe. And if any older person's watching this, I bet that brought a smile to their face. Yes, in my childhood, I remember these and a spud gun. Or potato gun. <laughs> anyway, moving right along. Ah, yes, now a lot of people won't remember this type of phone. But I do, because we had one in a way out in the boondocks in Canada. It was three rings for us, two rings for the person way down the road, and one ring for the person way down the road from that. It was all sort of wired into somebody's small little house, a Femon's house, funny enough. So what you used to do is wind the handle on there, which give her a signal, and you told her which person you wanted to talk to, and she would just plug you in. But of course she didn't listen to any of the conversations at all. Ha! <laughs> of course she did. But it worked, and in emergencies it was very good. And I consider it to be a safe unit. There was voltage going to it, but not a lot. And I bet you could buy a replica one today, and I bet it'd be a just a small fortune. Ah, the dial rotary phone. Now this looks like a bit of a US one, but still quite old. The type of phone you'd get in a film, say, of all the towns and all the gin joints, she walks into mine. Play it again, Sam. You play it for her, then play it for me. Ah yes, still a good film. But this phone worked quite well. Once again, very low voltage. And I think it would be deemed safe. I unfortunately don't remember this type of phone at all, but some of you American people might, if you're old enough. If you're still alive. Well, there it is. The phone that I remember the most. It was made of very hard sort of plastic. And this is a red one. A lot of them came in green for some reason. But they did come in many different colours. This is a red one, so it could be the bat phone. But this type of phone stayed current for quite some time. And the good thing about it, if you got angry or you annoyed at somebody at the other end, you could slam the phone down. You can't really do that with the modern mobiles. Well, I guess you can, but it'll probably cost you. But this phone was very popular in my day. It was robust. It hardly ever broke down. And of course it was deemed fairly safe. And there it is, the first real mobile phone. We called it the Brick, because it was so big and damn heavy. This was a very expensive phone and not a lot of people could have it. Businessmen used to have them in their cars. And I actually used it a couple of times myself. And I was quite amazed, back in those days, that I could phone somebody without any wires. You know, I'm a simple man, you know. But these phones weren't around for very long. But a lot of people that owned them were called yuppies in those days, because they had them just to have them, you know. And now, of course, you're getting into different technology, so are they deemed safe? Well, if you hit somebody with one of them, it'd probably kill them. But as for the technology that makes it work, who knows, really? Ah, yes, and there it is, the phone that mostly everybody on the planet had. And some people still do. The good old Nokia. The good things about them is you could drop them all over the place and they would still work. You try that with one of your new phones and the screen will probably go and it's going to cost you 200 quid to fix. And this Nokia is quite reliable. It's a shame what happened to Nokia. They kind of fell asleep and other people took over. But I think everybody out there should recognize this phone. At least the slightly older ones.
And of course this is using the tower of technology. You know, that stuff that goes through everything including us. And finally we come to today's technology. Now this phone will probably cost you at least £1,200 or even more. Then you're going to need to have a contract for at least 18 months. And of course it is still just a phone. But you can tether yourself to the internet. Which of course is what they want you to do so they can keep an eye on you. And where these phones have a reasonable amount of technology in them, they're way overpriced. They're overpriced because people have to have them. And they can pretty well charge what they want. But like I say, the younger people are never off them. They're tethered to the internet 24-7. And they have it stuck to their heads almost 24-7 as well. And the signals are getting stronger as well, so that can't help either. And like I say, there are papers online that tell you that it's not good for you. And that may be explained why a lot of the younger people have no real common sense. They seem like they're dumbed down. But I myself consider this type of phone quite dangerous. And not just because of the signals running right real close to your brain. But a lot of young people walk out into traffic looking at their phones not knowing where they are. And quite a few people have been killed because of that. But the long term effects of having that stuck next to your brain haven't filtered through yet. But if you just think of the amount of hours that the young person has it stuck in their ear, I can't see it being a good scenario. Basically what these phones have created for the younger people at least is a fake persona. Outside of their phone they really don't have a life, do they? And if their phone packs up, they're a nobody again. And I myself do have a smartphone, because I've had to have to contact certain things and get things done. But I use it minimally, and I'm not on the internet all the time either. But the only time the young people seem to put their phone down is when they go to sleep. And then it's only about four feet away from them. So what do you people out there think? Do you think these smartphones and iPhones are dangerous? And not just because they turn the young people into dumbies. But the technology that uses the signals to get from A to B, is it really safe? Now there's another survey they did about electrical cables, you know the ones on towers that run over the ground. There's not that many in the UK, but there's plenty in Canada and US. And that the houses around them, there are a lot more cancers than there should be apparently. Of course, that isn't advertised too much either. Technology is supposed to enhance our species. But this technology, as far as I'm concerned, has dumbed them down and made them go back. But that's just my thought, of course. You take it easy, people. Let me know what you think, eh? Oh, I feel some radiation going through me. Somebody must be getting a call.